I'm so excited to be here talking with you a bit about these shoots I did to showcase light illuminated on my subject and to kind of show how I play with light to create a really lovely, um, bright, visually happy, glowing image. With this session with this beautiful mom and daughter here, the light was pretty high, much higher than I normally would have it, but that was the only time of day we could shoot, so that's what we did. Um, so I definitely backlit my subjects and tried to keep the sun to the left or right corner of my frame. The sun was pretty high, so at certain points I got a little bit lower and I actually placed the sun directly behind my subjects, which I do often. Um, it just adds such a beautiful glow and really makes your subjects be kind of the center point of your images. This directional backlighting um, really naturally illuminates them and it adds a really airy kind of beautiful look to the image. I also find as the sun gets lower you can play even more with that directional light. Another thing I love to do is to place my subjects on the ground um, and get, get in really tight on my subjects and you can get that illumination like right on the side of their face. When my subjects are standing here in that beautiful sunlight with a tree in the background, I have them very backlit, but I'm actually using the tree to somewhat hide the sun. This enables me to be able to focus and um, not get too much of that harsh sun flare in my lens and still illuminate them. And don't be afraid to experiment too. I feel like with using backlighting and directional backlighting, it has taken me a lot of time to kind of find that sweet spot for me. And I definitely still get images that aren't in focus and that do have that harsh haze or that harsh light, which sometimes I can salvage in editing, but not always. So just practice and have fun and realize that um, it's going to be, you know, an experience and it's going to take time to find you know, what works for you. got out to the mustard this day there were a lot of people shooting there <laughs> so we were a little bit limited on where we could shoot um, also these mustard fields grow where there aren't really any trees and it was a, probably a good hour and a half to two hours before sunset so the light was really bright so again um, I really placed the Sun literally directly behind my subjects to get that illumination around them and create that beautiful backlit image I also, at certain times, placed them somewhere and had the sun way far to the left side of my frame so I could still focus on them. Some of the images were quite hazy, but I was able to, in editing, um, kind of get them to look the way I wanted. 
So one thing I absolutely love is sun flare. And I actually love to get a little bit of sun flare in my images. I feel like it um, adds a vibrancy to images. And you can kind of get different effects with sun flare. You never really know what you're going to get. And I don't often always see it as I'm shooting, but it's really um, fun to explore after and um, see what different effects I got. With my children here, I definitely made a point in that low light to have the sun in my frame to kind of play with um, lens flare and hopefully get some unique looks. I do find that certain lenses tend to get more flare than others. Definitely my 85 millimeter and my 135 tend to have um, more of that red ringy sun flare. Uh, my 35 millimeter tends to have more just of the rays. So I think lens that can be more compressed may create um, just more of a abstract and exciting lens flare um, effect. So I really fell in love with shooting in low light when capturing my own family. Um, there's just something so stunning and gorgeous about those bright colors in the sky and I'm always really mesmerized by um, just the beauty and the calmness and the depth of shooting in low light. 
when I am shooting my own children outdoors, which I used to do so much when they were little, but you know, we do it weekly now. Um, I really try to shoot during these times just because it is the time of day that um, I find the light so dazzling and luminous and just beautiful. Um, when I shoot this time of day, I tend to underexpose my images a bit because I really like to um, expose for my skies. I feel like with editing, I can always, um, you know, play with skin tones a bit and play with the way my subject looks, but it's really hard to bring back skies if you've blown them out. So that's something I really pay attention to when I'm shooting. Um, the other beauty of low light is that you're, you're not so tied to your subjects being in a, a certain spot. With those two sessions before, um, the sun was much brighter and higher. Therefore, I was real limited with where I shot and how I shot. And once that light gets super low and close to your horizon, you have so much flexibility. Um, and when you're working with your own children and it's much more lifestyle and relaxed, or even with clients, um, you don't have to be as concerned about where they are. I also love those really deep matted tones that you can get closer to sunsets. That's another reason why I am just love shooting in low light. When I'm working with clients, there's often a lot of resistance about shooting so late in the day, but I always urge them to, you know, have dinner before the session and feel free to throw out a huge bribe <laughs> with their children, whether it be ice cream after or um, a special bedtime story or an adventure the next day. So I do tend to push clients, especially really late in the day, if I can. It's a little harder in the summer, but people usually, um, if they've seen my work, they see the outcome and they know that it's worth it. Um, when you're shooting in low light, really make sure you're shooting in raw just because you have so much capability later in post-processing to um, adjust things. I tend to really reduce my highlights, adjust my skin tones, correct right balance, and do so much more. Um, I personally use Photoshop. I occasionally use Lightroom for larger projects, but I um, bulk edit in Photoshop and I, I'm just used to it now and I really like it. Um, one trick I use a lot with my skies is to actually lower the highlights all the way, um, save the image as a JPEG, and then open it up again in camera raw and lower them again, and you get kind of a double effect. And if there are colors in the sky, they just come out you know, even that much more, which is just really beautiful. When I'm shooting in a full sun, especially on an overcast or a cloudy day, I really like to shoot with the sun on my subject. This allows a lot more flexibility with how I'm going to shoot and where I'm going to shoot and it really helps to tell our family story and tell more about our day to day. I think it's really important when you're shooting this way just to make sure first and foremost that the light is hitting your subject in a complimentary way. And that's something that I've really had to experiment with. I love that just by road handing your subject even, you know, a quarter of a turn, you can get a totally different result or effect. Occasionally when I'm playing with my own children or with clients and I'm shooting in full sun, um, if I have them facing the sun, I'll tell a story or have them close their eyes or give them a moment to um, play with me or have a reason to look the other way. I might say, oh, do you see that bird over there? And then that gets them to turn their, their face right towards, you know, where I'm going to get that desired look with the full sunlight. Um, another thing I do sometimes is bring blankets and hats and um, things that can help shield the sun from them. And lastly, I think when you're shooting in full sun, that really is the memory. So it's okay for the light not to be ideal or perfect, and it's okay for it to be more bright and it might result in um, just a more upbeat image or an image that truly tells the story of, of your experience with either your client or your own children.
I love to take silhouette images at the beach and have you know that gorgeous sunset light in the background um, but having that light behind your subject will create the silhouette and your subject will be underexposed um, and in the shadow I often purposely underexpose by a few stops as well when I'm creating silhouette images and I try not to bump my ISO up too high so you can really get that color and that desired look. Um, with silhouette images, I do a lot in post-processing, so they definitely don't always look quite like they do in my end results. Um, I tend to like my silhouettes deep and moody and colorful, so I will often pull down the highlights, pull down the blacks, up the contrast quite a bit, and even saturate color if needed to give a desired effect. Thank you so much for being here.